Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome in to episode two of Console Command. I am your host, Alex the Red, and I have my co-host here, Hippo Patamus. How's it going, Hippo? Hey, Alex, how's it going? Hello, it's me. It's Hippo. How are you guys doing today? Sorry, I had a That's... brain fart because I, uh, I was looking in OBS and... I'm not used to doing this yet. Yeah, I'm going to peel the kimono for our first bit. I'm not used to messing with this, so I had Discord minimized like I normally would if I'm doing a stream. And Hippo is just like... His face is frozen. <laughs> and it looked a little looked a little, little off, so I had to had to move that to the side. No, that's, just, that's just my face in general. You know how it goes. Oh, I do know how it goes. I guess who forgot to send out their tweet. Anyways, enough looking behind the curtains. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing... A few different topics. There's been uh, not necessarily a ton of news for January in gaming, but a uh, enough that's uh, pr- pretty chunky. Pr- pretty pretty chunky, I'd say. Would you agree? It's kind of kind of thick, like me- medium thick, hippo. Yeah, it it, it thick. Yeah, big boy. It's it's news, not news can be a big big boy. Not, not, not big. Not boy, bi- but... <laughs> Yeah, not big, but big. But big. Yeah. So we're going to uh, discuss a few things. The first being uh, game delays. A few games that have been delayed and uh, some discussion around the uh, crunch culture in game dev as a result. HDQ 2020 wrapped up and uh, they uh, set a new goal with this event. The final character for Fighter Pass 1 and Smash Ultimate and the saltiness surrounding that. <laughs> some rumors for Horizon Zero Dawn and a different game coming to PC maybe. And a few other, uh, you know, little things like Doom trailer. Number two for Doom Eternal looks great. Iceborne issues on PC. Anyways, uh, yeah, you know nothing, nothing big, nothing important. You know, just Doom Eternal. Yeah, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about about no Left 4 Dead three. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Resident Evil three remake Nemesis. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Monster Hunter, but what you didn't mention is no Sony at E three too. So we're gonna be talking about that stuff as well. Yeah, I totally didn't look at the footer on the document and figure, okay, that's where it stops. I don't need to keep scrolling here. <laughs> I got you. I got you, boo. Don't worry. But before we get into all that, news is boring. Who wants to jump straight to news? I certainly don't want to when I get home from work, load up the podcast. I want to, you know, just hear what's going on with the people. People. So, Hippo, I've had a week. Have you had a week? Or a couple, Honestly, it's been a couple weeks since we did uh, episode one, right? It's been a few weeks, yeah. It's, they've, they've been, there have been ups. There have been downs. Alex, tell me about yours. What, what's been going on with you? I'm not going to go first. I, mean, I can segue <laughs> this to segue hell. Okay, no, I'll I'll tell you what's been going on. Honestly, not too, too much. This past week's been kind of crazy because uh, just awful work schedules. You got, I've talked to you all about that. Working, in, uh, working at 5 a.m. one day. Next day, I'll close. Day after that, I'll open. It's just it's very consistent and frustrating, but... Aside from that, uh, played a couple games, played Marble It Up. That's probably the most that I've played over the past couple weeks, aside from uh, one is, other thing. What What is that one, Alex? Marble It Up is a platformer where you play as, uh, as you might guess, a marble. And it's a lot more fun than I remembered. And I say remembered because I don't believe it's the same dev that made it, but there was a game back on the Xbox 360 what was it called? It's like Marble Blast Ultra or something. It might have been on other platforms too, but uh... Uh, I'm peeping some screenshots of this bad boy, and it looks like a it looks like Super Monkey Ball to me, just without the monkeys and without the bananas. Kind of when you when you're moving around, it's not uh, quite the same because the stage doesn't move. Well, in Monkey Ball, you're controlling the stage essentially. You're not controlling the monkey. Mm-hmm. and in this you are definitely controlling the marble and uh the physics feel really good like that's uh the one thing i remember from marble blast ultra and the more i think about it the more i th- i'm pretty sure the people that made uh marvel it up did make ultra because it was i don't want to say like it's the best xbla game back in the day but it was very very well known just like a chill like kind of low stress initially but then the difficulty ramps up uh, pretty nicely just a, a kind of a kind of a chill platformer in a way and so uh, you playing 
you playing this on Steam or are you playing it on your Xbox? How how you playing this one? Playing it on Steam. Uh, I can't remember the last time I turned on my Xbox. Actually, no. Yes, let me correct myself. Last time I turned on the Xbox was uh was for that charity stream. That was back in October. That feels like ages ago. That was a whole decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, I'm the same way with my place. Well, almost with the PlayStation. I just got Star Wars, so I've been playing that one. Uh, but I digress. Continue, my friend. Honestly, I don't have a whole lot to continue with. Uh, it seems pretty short. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm a platforming god, but uh, very I modest think too. Very modest. I th- I'm on the second to last world, and there is a Steam Workshop, I believe. Either Steam Workshop or uh, challenge packs that are getting released. the 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 real meat of this game, I found. As from just trying to get a better time, like you play something like Super Meat Boy, you try and get a better time on each level as you're playing that, or more recently, Super Mario Maker 2. I'm sure you remember doing some speed runs competitively on that. Don't remind me, I still feel like you cheated on some of those to get the better times than I had, especially Spike Hell. Oh, wait, you didn't finish Spike Hell, so we don't even <laughs> we're not even talking about Spike Hell at this point. Uh, we, we, for those who don't know, we played uh, a level designed by Jay Preet and it would, we just, we dubbed it Spike Hell and there was no, like, it wasn't Kaizo. It was just really tight jumps and it had like a, what, a 0.03% completion rating. Mm-hmm. And it only had like four clears until we got around to it. You got one of those Lily pie from last episode. She got one of those clears. Did Sir Claire ever get the clear? I'm pretty sure Claire actually got the world record. Oh, That's what how, how the whole saga ended, and I, I tried grinding it out, I, I, but for the life of me, I could not get it back. But I, I realize I'm I'm losing focus of what I was originally discussing. Let me let me steer it back. Marble it up. Uh, really good time so far. If you want a uh, platforming game that has a lot of replay value, if like if you're a score slash time chaser, it's definitely a good time. Um, and the difficulty scales very nicely. It's not like here's baby levels for the first world. And all of a sudden, Oh wait, let me just throw you into the deep end. It scales very nicely. Uh, yeah, it's just, just a, it's feels clean of a lot of like clutter that, uh, other platformers might have. But besides that, I played horizon chase turbo. I have less to say on this one cause I've only played, let me check steam 20 minutes of it, but it's a nice little arcade race. I all I did with these, uh, well, with Horizon Chase Turbo, at least I went into my humble library and saw, okay, what games have I not actually started playing recently? What what have I not even redeemed? And this was one of them. And I had a hankering. I don't, I don't know why I had a hankering for an arcade racer, and this was compared to Outrun, which I've heard is a good arcade racer. That's what so, I was going to say. I was taking a look at images on Google Images of this bad boy, and it looks a lot like Outrun. Yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty fun. It feels kind of, I don't know, sterile. S- sterile is the right word. It's, it's just very, it has a certain aesthetic that it's going for. I would say maybe even like a, a lo-fi, uh, what's the word, a vaporwave, I guess, kind of aesthetic. Which is, it's, it's lo-fi, lo-fi study until... As you race video games against about right. 16 CPU opponents on 32 different tracks. I don't know if it actually has 32 different tracks. Anyway, uh, it's it's fun. Good music. Good controls. Looks nice. Not a whole lot else to say on that. I'm playing that on Steam, but it is on Switch and various other platforms. But uh, the, now that I actually use my brain to think about it for longer than two seconds... The meat of my gaming experience from the past couple of weeks is with the Sega Genesis Mini. Mm. I was excited to get this. Uh, have you been playing? Uh, have you been playing a specific game on that, Alex? Well, multiple games. It was kind of a, a weird thing when this was first announced. I wasn't really all that excited for it because I grew up with Nintendo as a kid. So mm-hmm. NES Classic, cool. I want that. Oh wait, I can't find it anywhere. SNES Classic. I was ready when the SNES Classic was announced. I bought that shit at like 2 a.m. I was waiting for that. I wasn't going to have a repeat, especially since uh, I was more partial to this SNES anyway. So yeah, those two were great, but then the Genesis Mini was announced, and my first thought was, uh, is it going to be shit? 
Because I don't know if you remember the at games consoles, the ones that Sega was coming out with before or licensed to at games. Yeah, the ones you can buy for like, no, they did not. They don't run well. Sound emulation was pretty bad from what I remember on some of those as well. Awful sound emulation, although for for the life of me, I wouldn't be able to say how inaccurate it was. I just knew it didn't something about it didn't sound right, but I I didn't have the the context to say hey, Golden Axe doesn't sound correct here, or why is Sonic's blah, blah, doesn't sound right? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, but, so uh, uh, what games have you been playing on it? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to get to the games. I, I just wanted to give the, the backstory. I got to give the backstory. I got to give the people what they want to know. They want to know why hit. Alex bought and how he bought the Genesis Mini. But, uh, yeah, this was announced. I figured, okay, it's probably just going to be another pile of garbage like the At Games consoles. And they announced uh, M2 was going to be doing the emulation for it. M2, notable for a ton of uh, emulation releases. Like, uh, basically, they are the god king emperors of emulation. So, they have, uh, what was I think it's a Sega 3D Ages games on the 3DS. Uh, that was one of the, the big, big deal releases. So, they made more games than, like, an actual, like, console? Yeah, they, they made games. Port again. I don't know if porting is the right word. Porting, yeah. They, they ported the, a few of the Genesis games 3D, 3DS with 3D. They, they just do a ton of crazy stuff with uh, with, with their craft. I, I don't remember a lot of the details to to say it right now and, and not be, you know, slandering them or maybe not slander. Anyway, uh, M2 is the one that did the emulation for this and... Just about anyone that I've seen uh, talk about this that knows the Genesis says, hey, this is as close as this is going to get that's not an actual console. So I didn't want to pick this up at 80 bucks or 70 whatever the, the current MSRP is, because I want to play some Genesis games in more of an official capacity, but I don't want to spend that much on it. It was, it was more of a collector's item for me at this point than actually playing with it. But... Uh, what was it game? Yeah, GameStop had this insane deal. It was thirty-five bucks with the uh, the deal today, and mm-hmm. Target, fucking Target over here. I tried to go in and price match it. Lady tries to tell me, "Hey, no, we don't price match GameStop." And a very kind friend, I won't say who. It was uh, me. It, oh shit! <laughs> you worked at Target. Uh, you you showed me the uh, the link for hey. They do, these are all the retailers that they price match. Go back and tell them I want my price match. And the second person I asked, it was actually someone over in the uh, electronics. He uh, said, well, is that the price in the cart? No, it's not the price in the cart. Okay, fine, I get that. Don't just stonewall me immediately. Give me a reason as to why you're not going to do the thing. Then I won't be a Karen. I almost became a Karen. That, that's the lady, You got the lady that... She's like at the end of her shift and she's just like, I don't want to be here. You're asking me about price matching. Dude, get out of here. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with this. Yeah, essentially. So I picked it up and I actually didn't open it for a couple weeks because. Uh, just life stuff. That was basically when I was working the crazy schedules and could not get any free time whatsoever. Hello, doggy. Oh, Hi. But when I finally booted it up, uh, I was surprised because after the first two or three games, which were a little bit not not necessarily unbearable, but just I feel they hadn't aged as well. Uh, I, I actually started enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, I didn't like. Let me just. I'm gonna grab the box. Visual props. Visual pumps for an audio podcast. Not good planning, but that's fine. I just want to actually know what I'm talking about. So, the first game I played was Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. Not a good first impression. What what is what does Elfie want? I, I don't know. They're barking at something. You just keep on going. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm going to keep on going and talking about how Alex Kidd is a piece of shit game. I, I don't know... I was going to take my headphones with you. Got to take them with you. Uh, it didn't enjoy the game very much. Then I played Altered Beast. Supposedly a classic, and it, it was fine. But it wasn't really grabbing me. 
And I keep going down the list, and I'm trying to remember which one. Because on the system itself, it goes by release year. But on the back of the box here, it's alphabetical, so I don't remember. There was there was a turning point, essentially, where the quality was uh, was picking up a lot. I really enjoyed Golden Axe, which it's pretty simplistic, but it... Uh, it didn't necessarily speak to me, but I was having fun with that. Uh, That's Golden Axe. Golden Axe, yeah. Contra Golden? Heart. I'm oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. go ahead. So Golden Axe, I understand it as like a classic, a classic that that resonates with a lot of people. I tried playing it. I, I've tried playing it like when I was a child, around when it was when it was released. I just couldn't. I can't. I get bored with it. I don't know if it's because it's so hard and it was originally an arcade game, so it was supposed to be a you know, coin eater. But you die so much and there's only so much scrolling. Right. I think it actually might be an issue with me not liking beat em ups as much. Yeah, I think that that's probably why I felt the same way when I was looking at Altered Beast, honestly, because, you know, there's all the means of why for a real grave, but at its core is just bad is it just bad like i i don't want to say that because i don't want to bring the ire of the gaming community down on the the second episode here but i mean you take off your nostalgia glasses and you go back and play it it's four levels four levels that's it yeah and they're not necessarily difficult levels um graphics i mean our graphics are are good for the time i suppose uh but it's just it's very basic, like a product like, of its time. Yeah, and it, I mean, wasn't it a release console, a release game with a? Yeah, with, that that was the original pack in before the two that is Sonic started getting packed in with it. But yeah, so that's another one that I'm just like, eh. I mean, I'll play it, but no, I was very eh on Altered Beast too. Uh, Contra Hardcore is very hardcore. It's. I don't want to say the hardest running gun that I played yet, but it's definitely up there. One I need to revisit because I'm a big Contra fan. Ghouls and Ghosts just feels like like crap. Uh, probably because I've already played Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And just to kind of digress from the game discussion, is uh, there are some good games. Well, there, there there's a lot of good games on the Genesis uh, sound wise, but. The first few games, like Alex Kidd, Altered Beast, Ghouls and Ghosts, like yeah, I was Genesis say, sounds anything? like shit. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there anything on here that you enjoyed? It sounds like you just like any everything you've played so far. No, I'm I'm gonna get to that. It's just I, I wanted to to digress to the sound issue because again, probably because I didn't grow up with it, but a lot of the Genesis games, I don't, I hate the sound. Like the music is kind of just average the the wow there's a lot of that that i i'm not i'm not really a big fan of i don't want to say it sucks and it's dumb and and fuck you if you like genesis games that that have this kind of sound but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that might be part of why i didn't like ghouls and ghosts just sound design is not doing it for me other uh, it's what was it it's it's definitely different from the super nintendo and the nintendo because Super Nintendo was sample based, but I think for the Genesis it was something about the sound chip, like it was a uh, like an actual synthesizer, at least on the original release. So it was harder to make music for. So I guess I can't be mad at the devs. Uh, after that, Road Rash Two is okay, kind of choppy, really choppy, honestly. Strider, eh. So, okay, no, I remember now. Super Fantasy Zone was uh, probably the first or the second one that really just stood out. And I'm looking at this, and it, it's just this uh, defender type game. You know, you can go left or right as in your ship, push them up, and it's cutesy as all hell. So you think, man, this is a baby game for for dumb babies. Why would I ever want to play it? Um, uh, But uh, I actually was surprised because one is hard, quite difficult. And uh, sorry, I was distracted by a, a frozen, frozen animal, frozen hippo. How dare you freeze me? I won't freeze you again, I promise. 
But yeah, it looks like this baby game for for dumb babies first game who who needs to play something that's going to hold their hand the entire time. But it it kicks your ass very quickly cuz I think it's I think it's one hit death, might be one hit death. Yeah, it was one hit death. And uh it, it's it's deceptive with its difficulty. Music's really good on that one though. Uh Thunder Force 3, very hard but fun. Uh, honestly, can I can I have a controversial opinion here? No, I mean I, I've already said Altered Beast is bad, and so is Golden Axe. So go right ahead. I, I've played it before. The, I got the Genesis Mini, but tried playing Sonic the Hedgehog one again, and I didn't get very far because I was just taking a quick look at each game when I was doing the stream. But I don't like Sonic the Hedgehog one. I think it's bad. Now, why do you say that? Just don't like a lot of the stages. Like Green Hill Zone, fine, great, perfect, amazing. Great music, fun level design, awesome, cool. But uh, after that, I just, however far I got, I didn't really like any of the other stages. Sonic 2, I'll definitely say why I hate for sure. Or not hate, but just don't like as much as 3. Um, felt way too long. Final boss is way too frustrating. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing too far now. I'm going to wrap it up here. Sonic 2, way inferior to Sonic 3, which isn't on this thing. Why is Sonic 3 not on here? Don't tell me why. I know why. It's because of the music licensing. But Why the music licensing? Because I, I don't know if it was Michael Jackson directly or if it was just a producer that he worked with, but he had some involvement with the original music tracks in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So anything that tries to get re-released after that has to go through all that legal nonsense. I don't know how the Steam version exists the for the Mega uh, Sonic Genesis uh, Classics on there, but it's on there. But I uh, had to hack it to put Sonic 3 on there. That's the first time I've hacked any of these mini consoles, and it was surprisingly easy. Like, I was not necessarily intimidated by the process. I'm, I'm going to... Peel back the kimono here because I'm concerned. Hippo, are you? Is your connection dropping out? Because your video keeps. Hippo, can you hear me? Ah, fuck. You know, it wouldn't be an Alex the Red experience without some sort of audio issue. Some sort of technical issue. I mean. Well, it's not that even that he, he stops moving, but he's not talking, unless he left to go take care of dog issues. Yeah, when I, when I hacked this, it uh, was a lot easier than uh, I thought it was going to be. And it's just a hippo troll. If it's a hippo troll, I, I, I hope it's not. I don't think it is. Hippo's smarter than that. Nope, don't go to that screen. Hello. Hey, what happened? Oh, you know, just internet things. Um, the, you remember when you asked me earlier what the dogs were barking at? Mm -hmm. There was a cable truck outside. They were barking at that cable truck, and I lost lost my internet for just a little bit. Oh, is that truck still out there? I don't know. I'm not gonna open the window for them to bark at. That's a good point. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, guys. I guess I'll. I I did everything possible before the podcast thinking okay i'm gonna give myself as little work later to not have to cut up anything for the for when i upload this later but cable truck man god damn it he gave we're gonna he, fight him we are going i will drive down there i will drive the four hours with my 5 a.m start tomorrow and kick his ass but yeah uh, back to what i was saying we'll, we'll cut that later um uh, i hacked the genesis mini and it uh, was a very easy process I'm kind of tempted to do the same to my uh, SNES and NES Classic here. Add some more stuff to those. I guess since I didn't have the nostalgia tied to this, uh, it was, uh, was a little bit easier to tell myself, hey, go ahead and put some more stuff on there. I, I don't remember what all games I put on there, and I'm not going to click on other screens because I don't want Discord to go away. But uh, I will just touch on uh, very quickly 
Streets of Rage 2. I haven't played that before, if, at least if I did play it. Uh, I, I, I think I still remember, because I, I think I had played it all the way through with someone, but playing it again, that game slaps so hard. I can't wait to go back and play it, play it all the way through it on a stream. Hey, Alex. Yeah? Humor me for a second. Yes. Let's go over the games that are on the Genesis Genesis Mini. Okay. I've got my whiteboard right here. You just say if you like it or you dislike it, and okay. I'll go ahead and make tally marks, and we'll see how many of the games on the actual Genesis Mini that you liked. Okay. I was going to stop after Streets of Rage 2. I wasn't going to keep keep wandering. Now let's uh, let, let's 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 have all those bad boys. Okay. I want to I, I want to know what I want to know what you like. I want to see. Do you want me to sell you? On the Sega Genesis Mini? Sell me, the, sell me on the, the Genesis Mini. You tell me how many games you like, how many you dislike, and then you sell it to me. All right, Alex Kidd, awful. Uh, Alicia Dragon, pr uh, Le Gr Dragoon, pretty cool. Like. Altered Beast, dislike. Beyond Oasis, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't played all of them yet, actually. Okay. Uh, Castlevania Bloodlines, that game slaps. Columns is okay. Comic Zone, I have not played that I've heard is good, so you can slap that under liked. Contra Hardcore, like. Dynamite Heady, like. You, we, there's 40 games on this. Do you want to do this? Let's go. Let's go, brother. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, I said I didn't want a structure for this podcast. And I, I mean that. I truly mean that. At least for free news. I, I don't want a structure. So what are we at? Six. Dynamite Heady. Uh, like. Uh, Earthworm Jim, I have never played. Is it good? Oh, you got a, a neutral section? Yeah. Uh, Earthworm Jim, it's okay. Um, for me, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I can appreciate it. My my brother really enjoyed it back on the Super Nintendo. We didn't have it on the Genesis. For me, I was really bad at it. I enjoyed finding all the other, finding all of the weapons, but I was young and bad at video games, as opposed to now where I'm old and bad at video games. <laughs> so... I wasn't as much of a fan because it's not an easy game either. Hmm. Eternal Champions, I hear, is bad, so dislike. Got it. Ghouls and Ghosts, like, even though the music and sound design is bad. Uh, Golden Axe, like. Gunstar Heroes, like. A Chameleon, like. Landstalker, uh, neutral. What the fuck is Light Crusader? <laughs> All right, so that's a. <laughs> I, I just I have no idea what it is. Just about everything else on the back of this box, I at least tangentially know, or have heard of. Mega Man: The Wily Wars, like Monster World Four, like Fantasy Star Four. Do you like Fantasy Star Four? Do you? Yeah, that's definitely for me. I'm putting a like on it, even if you dislike. It. I was gonna say dislike, but I, I don't know. Mean Bean Machine, like Road Rash Two, like. Shining Force, is that basically like 16-bit Final Fantasy Tactics, like a, a good tactics RPG? Yeah, I don't know if it's like Final Fantasy Tactics. I think it's more, well, I guess. Is it more like Ogre, Tactics Ogre? Yeah, like you, I, I think with that one, like you get into your little combat th combat, and it like shows like a little cut scene of what happens. Oh, so it's like Fire Emblem. Emblem. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure it is. More on that later. Uh, let's let's put like for that. Shinobi three like, Sonic Spinball. Uh, what little I played, I'm gonna say dislike. Sonic the Hedgehog. Can you put a dislike on that? I mean, yep, dislike. Yep. Sonic two like. Space Harrier two choppy as hell, but like. Street Fighter two. Uh, Street Fighter is sure like. Streets of Rage 2, super like. Strider, like. Super Fantasy Zone, like. Thunder Force 3, like. Toe Jam and Earl, dislike. How dare you? How dare I? I, I, did, I don't understand the game. Like, well, what? No, I, can, I completely understand why you dislike that. I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I can understand why anyone would dislike that because it's so slow. I, I just don't know what you're supposed to do. Like, do you just find the exit on each level? Is that it? Sure, why is... not? Let's go with that. <laughs> Does it have any sort of structure? Is what I what I I just don't know. Unbeknownst to us, I'm sure there is some. Vector Man. 
I want to say like, because I like the aesthetic. The sound is cool. Music's cool. It, it looks really cool, but the gameplay, I don't know. It, we'll see. Virtue Fighter 2, dislike purely because they tried to cash in on the craze, and it's a bad 2D version of it. Wonder Boy, like, and World of Illusion. Oh, wait, no, there's more than that. Uh, World of Illusion, like, Echo the Dolphin, dislike, because I got confused on the first 30 seconds, and that's my fault, not the game's. Or the game's fault, not mine. Echo the Dolphin, dislike, because it's smarter than me. Yeah, basically. Castle of Illusion, like, Darius, dislike, and Tetris, Dislike. Dis dislike. That's the worst version of Tetris I played in a long time. Is I mean, it really? Yeah, like it's just so bare bones. They're trying to, they they wanted to have a Star Fox too. Look at this thing that never ever came out. You can now have thing on this thing, but I don't want thing on this thing because this thing is bad. It's slow. It's lacking a lot of the features, like the functionality of other Tetris games, like as far as. Being able to move pieces, what timing you can move your pieces in, locking them in, stuff like that. Uh, music bad. Just no personality either. Bad, bad, bad. I would probably say, aside from Alex Kidd, it might even be the worst game on this thing. Honestly. But overall, that's all of them, yeah. Alright, you want to know what the final tally is? Uh, a lot more likes than dislikes. That's true. So... For dislike, it looks like we had nine of them. For likes, we had 5, 10, 15, 25, 29. We had three neutrals, and we had one, what the fuck is this? Which one was what the fuck is this? Oh, the uh, Light Crusader. Does anyone know what Light Crusader is? What the fuck is Light Crusader? I don't know. Let me look it up real quick. Yeah, you can look it up because you're not going to be as loud as me on the keyboard. Light Crusaders for the Genesis. Let's take a look. I mean, you can't have all good games. Well, no, you, I don't know. Okay, so I want to say that. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking over. You. It looks like. Is that a strategy game? No, it looks like it might be an action game, but it's like one of those uh, perspective kind of things where like you're looking at it like kind of like Zelda. Mm, not Zelda, because it's like. Like Diablo, it looks like Diablo. Oh, so like a action RPG. Yeah, I suppose so. It doesn't look very good. Uh, also, not. the the box art though it bangs. It bangs. Does does it, she she bang? She bang. She bang. Ooh, baby, I want this night in my bed. Yeah, I wanted to say you can't have all good games on there, but you can have all good games on there because at least to me, and I'm not comparing it to the NES class because they're they're two different types of machinery or two different eras um the snes to me had all good games on there some of them may not have aged as well but they are still functionally good good games objectively good i should say whereas on the genesis you have some some stinkers like i said tetris alex, alex kid altered beast uh, okay no even even if it is a stinker, I understand Altered Beast being on there. Same thing with Golden Axe. And me saying Golden Axe is a stinker, that's that's a controversial opinion. But I 100% understand Altered Beast being on there because I think it was the first game with a Genesis. I know that was yeah. one of the first the first tie-in game with the system, at least. Eternal Champions is bad. I, th I think they, they just didn't have... I don't know how I want to put this into words because I feel like with an SNES Classic, it had like 23, 22 games on there, whereas the Genesis has 40. I feel like they were adding some of these just to say, hey, look, we have more than that other thing. Buy this instead. Well, you know what? But, it could be worse. It could be the PlayStation Classic. Oh, God, please. That's. I don't want to say that's a whole podcast onto itself, but <laughs> it would definitely be a good bit of time because there's... That whole thing was just wrong. Anyway. At one point when I was working at Target, I saw that you could get the SNES Classic. Not mm. SNES Classic, the PlayStation Classic for around 20 bucks. The, based on like sales going on in the store plus additional coupons given by the store. Mm. They were just trying to get rid of the inventory on that thing. Yeah. I saw that and I thought to myself, you know what? Previous Alex would just impulse buy this immediately because it's 20 bucks. Who gives a fuck? But 
smarter or older Alex. This is one of the perks of getting older, kids. You actually start using your brain more sometimes. Uh, I thought, well, I could mod it, but that's a lot of work to make it more functional to the point where I, there's actually some good stuff on there. But that's that's some gas money. That's some some food. That's like a dinner. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do it. Now it's back up to sixty, and I'm I'm probably not gonna buy one for for a good while if I ever do buy one in the end. Yeah, you know, I, I thought about like picking it up and you like turning it into like a little emulation box or putting other PlayStation games on there. Mm. But at the same time, like I could also buy a Raspberry Pi and do that. Yeah. Granted, I guess for twenty bucks it would be cheaper to do it that way. But yeah, I've got my computer too. I can do all that stuff on the computer. So. Yeah, overall, Genesis Mini is a good time. I'm definitely going to add some more stuff to it later, get some more playtime out of it, finish some games that I never played before, because uh, Shinobi and Streets of Rage and a, a lot of shmups too, just stuff I, I never touched, like, wow, I really like this. That doesn't make me sad that I didn't have a Genesis, but a good time overall. Did I play anything else? I checked out Monolith after the end very briefly. About uh, well, close to an hour. It's a game that uh, it's a roguelike. First off, it controls kind of like the Binding of Isaac, but you're playing like a ship, so it's a, a shmup roguelike combination, and it, it works really well. Uh, I've made What's a it? monolith after the end. I just want to take a look and see what it is. Go ahead. Uh, it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. It is currently seven ninety nine, but most Steam sales that it's been a part of, I think it's gone down to at least two fifty. But uh, yeah, I think the Binding of Isaac, but instead you're a ship, and uh, less items to pick up as far as uh, power ups are concerned. But you still get power ups changes to your ship. Uh, it's it's a neat little game so far. I'm looking forward to playing more of that. I'm trying to think if I've uh, watched anything recently. I remember starting a Curb Your Enthusiasm. I know it's kind of out of left field. I was looking for something to watch on uh, Prime one night while we were eating dinner and figured, why not give this a try? We couldn't find anything else. And man, that uh, it's. I could start in the new season, but I, I'm, I don't want to say I've got OCD about it, but. If something's been around for more than two or three seasons, you want to start at the beginning, see, see what's going on, right? Yeah. So Makes I figured sense. I'd start off in uh, season one, which was uh, 20 years ago, by the way. Uh, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I, I can't, I couldn't believe it, so I had to make sure I say it, to, so you let it set in. No, let me let this set in. 20 years ago was the year 2000. Yep. Y2K. Which actually does, uh, um, uh, factor into some, some recent gaming news. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good so far. I haven't watched Seinfeld, so I can't really compare it to that. But uh, it's it feels to me kind of like The Office if Michael wasn't a complete blathering buffoon. Like, if, if he was smart and knew what he was doing as far as being awkward in all these social situations where the social faux pas. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching more of that. Have you seen any of that or, or no? No, I haven't seen Curb Your Enthusiasm. There, it's on my list of two watch shows, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. It's so hard to find the time now to just watch something, you know? Pretty much any time I'm watching something that's not YouTube videos is when I'm eating dinner with Tori. Like mm -hmm. 99% of the time, if we're watching a movie or a show, we're eating dinner, we're eating food, or lunch, or breakfast, whatever. That, that's what's going on. Same on my end. It's just, you know... It, between work, trying to find time to play games, trying to find time to watch TV, and now there's just a lot of content on YouTube or Twitch that you want to watch too, so it's just so hard to find find the time to watch watch anything, really. Or streaming ourselves, too. Yeah. I, I lied. There is one other game I played pretty briefly. Uh, mm -hmm. Ukulele and the Impossible there. That was free on the uh, Epic Game Store during the uh, the holidays. It was either last or second to last free game. Is that a sequel to Ukulele, or is it uh, is it DLC for it? 
Uh, well, it's a separate game. I don't know if it's technically considered a sequel because the first ukulele, what that game tried to do was harken back to the collectathon era. So mainly Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Donkey Kong Country 64. Excuse me, Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> I wish there was a Donkey Kong Country on N64. Yeah, harken back to that kind of uh, gameplay style. And Platonic, the devs for, for ukulele, is made up by a lot of former former rare people. So uh, I don't remember all the names. That's the gist of that. But the first, that's what the first game did. Second game, being Impossible Lair, instead of going down that, further down that road of 3D collectathons, they went back to just good old 2D uh, side-scrolling platformer a la Donkey Kong Country. And while I haven't played Ukulele to have an opinion on that, whether it be good or bad, general consensus seems to be, eh, maybe this hasn't gone, hasn't aged as well. Uh, it, it's really fun. The, plat the controls are solid. Music is good. Uh, visuals look great. It still has the weird like the the miming for the characters when they're talking. Well, honestly, that's part of the charm of those kind of games, though, isn't it? Uh, oh, not not yeah. for not for me personally, at least in this game. Yeah, that's I that's a good time. The charm for it. That's a good time so far. But that's uh, pretty much all the substantial stuff I had to talk about for this past week. Hippo, what do you? What did you do this past week, past two weeks? Well, you know, I don't, you, you know me, like I don't really have as much time to play games. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff that happen that goes on IRL. Um, so like, uh, I'm gonna be in a new show. I'm gonna be in a little shop of horrors show, wow. and I filmed some extra stuff. I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be a extra in a little local indie horror movie. Oh, mm hmm, and. I'm in another scene for that too, but I'm wearing a mask. I'm gonna be in. I'm in the trailer. I made the trailer for the movie. I, I thought that was pretty cool. So you're just gonna try and lord it over us that you have a life. Well, you, you can't be a real gamer if you have a life, hippo. Come on, man. I'm, real gamers, real gamers can't leave their their basement. Is that what I'm hearing? I feel like I'm being personally attacked right now. <laughs> I'm literally in a basement. Got him. No, no. It's just you know, I just don't have as much time to play play games with everything going on. Uh, Danielle's mom's birthday was this past week, and we have some friends whose birthday was was also this week. So we had uh, two parties. Did we had a low country boil yesterday? Who, who, who is Danielle? I don't know who that is. Is Danielle? Excuse me. Danielle is my wife. Thank you. Thank you. That was a perfect. Uh, but her mom's. Her mom's birthday was this past week, and we did a party for her yesterday. We had a low country boil, and for those who don't know what it is, uh, you take a, a just a giant pot, and you you put I don't know what this is. it's like a crab seasoning in there. Old Bay uh, seasoning? Toss, no, it's not Old Bay. I mean, I'm sure Old Bay would work. I don't know what the one that we it's like Zataran or whatever is the one that we use, but I'm sure Old Bay would be fine for it. Uh, would would be fine with it as well, but. You, you take a pot, fill it with water, you put that seasoning in there, you throw in some potatoes, give it like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you throw in some corn, give it another 10 to 15 minutes. You throw in sausage, give it another, you, you cut up the sausage, of course. Yeah. You, you put it in there, give it another 10 to 15 minutes. You throw in shrimp, give it another five, five minutes or so. And when that's all nice and cooked, you cover our table with tinfoil and you dump that bad boy in it on the table. And every, have at it you it's just so good you, so you're just eating at a trough yeah pretty much. no you get you have plates too you you put your food on the plate too we're you have utensils here. i never had a low country broil i i've wanted to but i i've never been somewhere that did it and i'm i'm definitely not going to put in the work to do one or to make it i mean well it's, it's more of like an event kind of thing like you wouldn't make it for yourself i guess you could if you did a smaller amount oh also there are onions in there too oh um, onions are good not Love onions. Yeah, it, it's it's mm, c'est magnifique. It's really good. And then after that, we had to leave that party early, and we went to our friend's birthday party, and we had a little murder mystery because we're we're all the acting type, and we we have to do that kind of thing. It was a lot of fun. We all got really lit, and I don't know who the I don't think we ever actually got got to the mystery part. 
There was the murder part, and then we all got lit. So the mystery is how did you guys get lit and not have the actual uh, LARPing session? You can call it that. Don't you call it LARP? Yeah, I mean, it is kind of like <laughs> LARPing. Essentially LARPing. It was it was supposed to be a 1920s themed um, uh, murder mystery, and I was supposed to be Billy the bartender with a uh, heart of gold who makes enough money because I left Wall Street for this job so I could drink for free, mm-hmm. and all of my Wall Street buddies come to the bar and they leave me good tips both on the stock market and to line my pockets. Hmm. I think I was gonna die. I don't know. Uh, we got lit. It was. Is good. that why you're getting lit? Is to kind of be accurate. You get too. Yes. Lit? Yes. That's exactly why. I was just. I was just in character. Especially this morning, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we don't talk about it this morning. Oh, okay. No, this morning I wasn't too bad. I wasn't too bad off. Because you had that Pedialyte, right? No, I actually didn't have any Pedialyte. I had oh. a lot of water. That's if you if anyone wants to have a couple of drinks be sure you you space it out with water so you don't wake up with that hangover headache i've had a hangover only one i'll tell you now that i'm older i get the hangover so so much more frequently than i used to i don't really I remember... drink that much either not as much as you are you trying to say i have a problem <laughs> well no 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 it's just when you when the few times that you do go you go hard in the paint Whereas I'll have maybe four drinks at the most. That makes sense. Well, to be fair, for me, four drinks at the most is going hard in the paint. I don't know why I said that. I just remember a friend saying that to emphasize, man, I'm really going in on this. I have no idea what it means. I hope I'm yeah, not. I was, I was a little surprised you hit me with that basketball reference. I was pretty proud of you for a minute there. Oh, <laughs> damn it. I should have I kept going with it. So, so what is what does that mean? So going hard in the paint, uh, that's the, the paint is. How should I describe it? If you don't, so you have the foul line and then the little box that leads to the hoop. Mm. It's usually painted a color. That's the paint. So that's posting up in the paint, trying to get to the hoop, trying to drive to the hoop. Right. That's so going hard to the paint is. Going for it, you're going you're even though there are there are defenders there, you're going for it and you're going to you're going to dunk that basketball, Alex and a dunk on him. You're going to dunk on them. Okay. Now I can say that. Now I can say that knowingly. Um, Not not being new. As far as video games go, uh, I normally I wouldn't have played a game, but at your request, I started to look into games to play to talk about on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And initially I wanted to have a segment and I'm still thinking about doing this in the future, having a little segment where I check out something new on Steam. I was looking at the new releases yesterday on Steam. There is a lot of poop on there. There is a lot of filth. Like, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Oh, that looks terrible. Hey, that's just paper, papers, please. But it looks even worse. (laughs) Did they just like change some of the assets and paper, please, and re-upload it? It looks like a flash version of papers, please. Oh, God, that sounds awful. Um, I was like, hey, the, the, the concept for this sounds interesting. And I looked at it a little bit more. And then, like, I read the description. I was just like, this game is papers, please. It just looks awful. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure they're not the only I'm sure papers, please isn't the first one of that type. But like, it sounded just like papers, please. I mean, I don't know. I feel like papers, please probably was the first of its type, which I don't know what genre that would fall under. Indie. Uh, When you don't know what it is, you just call it indie migration him up my migration up (laughs) i mean Uh, or no wait border oh let's well i was gonna say border control simulator (laughs) well it is you are literally a border control person border control simulator anyway going back to uh going back to what i was looking at on the new release section um there's also a ton of filth and i don't mean like Like, it's bad. I mean, it could be. I don't know. But it's like, you can't play that on Twitch. It's not adult-oriented. A lot of anime titties. Well, all right. You said it, not me. I mean, that's what is there. Yeah, as chat's pointing out, hentai puzzle games galore. Hey, don't you talk about Honey Pop like that. There was, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, 
customer comes first. I'll let you decide on what that means. Oh. Um, hentai sniper. I'm like, how? <laughs> what? What are these games? So uh, join us next console command where I go into Hippo's new release scared corner and I'll tell you guys about a really crappy game that I probably played. Well, I hope you didn't purchase any crappy games because please, please do did. not spend money to give us talking points. Not not if only that, but you have a backlog. I'm sure you have a backlog. If it's like a dollar to five dollars, I don't care. I'll be all right with that. I care. Um, But as per the backlog, I, I wanted to find something to play and I didn't feel like looking through all the hentai simulators. Yeah. So I jumped onto my Humble Bundle. I've got a million games that I've gotten from the Humble Bundle. And I started playing Chasm, which I feel like might be right up your alley. It's a Metroidvania type of game. What? I heard Metroidvania. Where? Where do I download this? In your Humble Bundle. It was, I think, December's Humble Bundle. Uh, it's called Chasm. I was a little worried when I first saw it because it had mixed mixed reviews, according to Humble Bundle. But so there's a story in the game, which it plays out through notes that you find as you're going through the mines that you're going through. I don't know what it is. I haven't been paying attention to it. It's probably good. I just I get the notes. I'm like, well, you, you have to find it piece by piece. And I don't feel like reading just this one page. I want it kind of like I, w I kind of want to experience it like either. I want the game to like show it to me or mm -hmm. I want to experience it all in one th one go. I don't want like, hey, here's here's a note. This is the story, I guess. Guess who has an unclaimed key for Chasm? Is it PewDiePie? It is Alex the Red and who is adding it to their Steam inventory as we speak. I think you'd enjoy it. It plays a lot. It reminds me of like the Game Boy Advance Castlevania's minus the story. Mm. Um, you can change your weapons. Uh, your magic are basically your sub weapons from Castlevania. Gotcha. Uh, you're you in, you're in a town you're exploring the mines to save the people in the town so you have to find the town folk as you're going through that's one thing i wish was a little bit different because at the start of the game all there is is like the mine owner that you can talk to right. uh, to get your sub weapons you need to say save the magic lady to buy new weapons kind of like uh, save the blacksmith kind of like rogue legacy where in the beginning of that you just have like the architect out there and then you save npcs as you mm -hmm. go through and then you can add new feature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Except you're not doing multiple runs of this. Now, when I was making my character, well, not making my character, when I was starting my run, I guess, I, I guess I just shouldn't even say run because it feels like it's one, one big game, mm -hmm. but it gave you the option of like changing your seed and it gave you a seed. So I don't know if the mine is kind of generated differently from person to person, seed to seed. Uh, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. Like, I, I'm not sure where the, the negative reviews come into it. Maybe it's like the story to me so far, isn't really that great, but the gameplay, the gameplay really is a star of that show. There are different weapons. Like you start off with a short sword, but you have your different weapons that control differently. So like you get a club. So instead of your regular Alucard sword swing, you have an overhead, slow overhead attack that does massive damage but big or, wind up. yeah or you have like a club which attacks like the straight sword uh, it's the same speed but it's a little stronger but you can't do a down angle strike with it you can only shoot shoot straight ahead uh you can get a whip that acts like the whip from castlevania so i mean it's not original but it's fun um the only knock that i could i could maybe think about it besides the story is you come across a lot of the tall hallways that are very Metroid esque, where you know you're just kind of going up or down, and then you have rooms on left, left and right that'll lead to wherever. But I mean, for the style of game, I mean, I feel like that's going to be what you're coming into. Overall, I really like it. It's a thumbs up for me. Maybe an eight out of ten for me so far. How's the music? Oh, the music is so good. I really like the music, and you, they actually, it it's not needed. But I really enjoy that they added this little extra touch in there. You can change the music from the original music that they've got playing to a chiptune style. Ooh. The, 
yeah, the, the original music, I think, sounds better, but it's nice to have that option to do that. Yeah. Um, music, music is good. Uh, sound, sound design sounds fine. Like, I don't have any negatives about it. After we finish, after we finish the podcast, I'm probably going to play more of it, honestly. I might check that out tonight. Sounds like it might be a good time. I remember reading about this on different uh, circles online when it first came out. And I think part of the uh, negative reviews is just in this billing because I don't remember if it was kickstarted or not. But in early access, it was a lot of promise of being a roguelike Metroidvania. Roguelite, I'm sorry. People get picky about that. Uh, and in the end, it didn't uh, have as much of a structure of a roguelite. It was just one set world for your entire save file. And I haven't played it, so I don't know where the the death mechanics come in, like what happens when you die. But that that when, was where... When you die, you go back to a save point. There are save points in the game. Really? Yeah, and that's... Uh, I, I wish there were more save points, honestly, but I think that that's more on me being a bad gamer than a fault of the game. Hmm. Uh, but game. yeah, if you if you die, that's not like a permadeath mechanic. When you die, you, you go back to your save point like you would in one of the Castlevania. I, I feel like the roguelite element might be that dungeon like the the seed at the beginning where it would change the, how the dungeon is generated mm -hmm. but i haven't come across aside from maybe wanting to stream it i haven't come across wanting to put in a new seed or or changing my seed or anything like that there, i mean there may be i'm sure there's someone out there who has like a seed so you can power level really quickly mm. i haven't looked into it though but I, I have like your seed. The roguelite. I feel like that's where the roguelite elements would come into play, where you have the different seeds for the dungeon. Can I, I have I your seed? Dungeon, the... You can, keep, keep talking over my joke. Yes, give me your seed. Give me your lit. Okay. Anyway, wait. Oh, part. Mm. I, 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 I wanted to say the word, but I haven't quite. I'm still kind of feeling out. Give me your customer comes first. Give me your come, please. What? <laughs> Like I said, I, I, I'm just trying to feel out the podcast, feel the That's, tone. I mean, I've known you long enough fair. that I would say that to you, IRL. That's but, fair. Yeah, you would say you. I mean, I mean, just like you know, so. anyway. Uh, <laughs> Alex, I think that's it for me. How about we uh, we move on? I'm going to go ahead and kind of bring in the next thing. Alex, I want you to go ahead and get us started. And we're going to talk about some of these some of these delays that may have happened. Alex, you want to go ahead and take us off on that? I don't know. I think I might want to wait about 30 more seconds for no particular reason, just to kind of bait people on. That sounds about right. It sounds like our um, sounds like our news story might be getting delayed. We could just talk about something else while we delay this story. Now let's go ahead and talk about our delays. Let's go. Well, several games have been delayed. Recently, I think all in the span of the same week. Cyberpunk 2077 is now coming out on September 17th. I think the original release date was, was it March or was it April? It was going to, I think it was April. April. That's I, when Final, it was going to be the same week that Final Fantasy is now. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, people were just making a big fuss. Oh no, what am I going to play? Cyberpunk or Final Fantasy? Obviously you want to play Final Fantasy because who wants Cyberpunk? Looks like a poopy game by Poopy Devs. <laughs> I've never heard of it. What's I, a CD Projekt Red? What's the what's the Keanu Reeves? Final Fantasy Ooh. VII Remastered coming out April 10th. And Avengers coming out in September. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff delayed. And I, I just want to get this right off. Right. Sorry. I, I'm working out like two hours of sleep, so you have to forgive me for just having these moments where my words just don't come out of my mouth. Alex, I got but, you. So it also looks like uh, the Last of Us. I don't know if this was announced recently, but Last of Us Two was also um, moved from February to a little bit later in the summer. I think it was. I don't have the exact. Really? Date. How did I miss yep. that? That's like probably the biggest game of the. I don't know how I missed that. It's uh, excuse me. It's in one of the articles that you told me to read. <laughs> well, I didn't know that game. That you've so chosen not to read, apparently. Yeah, that's fine. But no, uh... but but that's also been delayed. Um, you know, you, you were making fun of it, Alex, but I kind of understand the I, people saying like uh, before Cyberpunk got delayed, 
uh, people wondering, oh, am I going to play Cyberpunk or am I going to play Final Fantasy? And it, they are like huge time commitments to play either of those yeah. games. One's a JRPG, one's a massive, massively open world, open world, uh, open world style video game sandbox. Yeah, it's like it, not only that, but it's 60 bucks per game. Are we sure it, it is Final Fantasy? Do we have a price on Final Fantasy yet? Because I know that's supposed to be episodic. It's going to be 60. It's going to be 60? Yep. Oof. I don't so know if it is is going to be episodic because they haven't really given... They've kind of hinted it. it when it was first announced, they were dropping the gauntlet down, like saying this will be an episodic game. But then they kind of started shying away from that. I'm pretty sure that this release is going to end with the uh, the explosion in Midgard. Like once that's done, that's the end of the end of the game. And then... If we get a part two, will that be just one game or is there going to be a part three? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this is going to end I mean, at Midgard. If if that's going to be 60 bucks, just going through Mid, that's going to be. Mm. Well, I mean, you got to think about how much of a remake it's going to be like they, they're true. from the ground up. They're probably going to add some new areas, too. It's going to be a, a it's not going to be. Well, how long was Midgard in the original original game? I haven't played it in God knows how long, so I forget. I mean, it was it was a sizable portion of it, but it was one disc. That, that was I, the end of disc one, wasn't it? Mm, Pretty sure. Was that was. disc one? It may have been disc one. It was because the game was four disc, wasn't it? It was three. If I remember it. Right? Three, it three, three, and a demo disc, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Re- regardless, I mean, I I know it's a remake. And I know they're going to be adding more content. Uh, but just in my mind, like back in the day, we paid full price for the full game. If it's not like the full game, if it's only just like that one section for full price, I don't know, man. Like I that like thinking about it that way, just discussing it, it's kind of turned my excitement for the Final Fantasy seven down, maybe like a notch or two. I mean, I'm still going to check it out. I'm going to wait for reviews on it, of course, but no, I'm not as hyped about it. I disagree. But... Namely because, well, I'm not super hyped on it personally because I haven't been following it. But what little I ha- what trailers I have seen, like, oh, shit, this looks this actually looks really good. And mainly because if I want to replay this game, you pop in the disc. Sure, there's the whole discussion of look past the graphics. And for certain generations, that's easier. It is not easy at all for the PlayStation generation. You look at this, this game looks... Honestly, I think it looks like dog shit. It has its charm, sure. But the way the characters look... Yeah, it's that it's, early it's 3D bad. look. That's just not... It, it really it really doesn't look good. I have and a I, weird hard-on for pre-rendered backgrounds, though. I love that shit. So I bet you have, like, a weird... It's a weird sensation with the disgust, but the but the the love loving of the pre-rendered backgrounds. Yeah. That's um, it. When you make that jump from that awkward phase of 3D to the level of detail they're putting into this, I, in a, I want to say I understand why they're making multiple releases for this, because if they... We'd probably be talking about a much longer delay if it was going to be all on one disc. Honestly. But at the same time, you get sizable games like Final Fantasy 15, mm. which have the same, which are just they, which look just as good. Well, that game was delayed several times. It was an entirely different game before it became Final Fantasy 15. So it's I don't feel it's like, fair to compare those. I'm not worried about the delay. I'm just worried about the amount of content that's going to be in the game. I don't think contents should be a concern because they're they're fleshing it out. There's not just a straight rip of here's what happened in Final Fantasy VII in this area. It's okay. Here's what happened. Where can we kind of fill in some gaps that we maybe didn't uh, have the time or the technology to back in 1996 or wherever they were. Oh, Alex, we uh, we also we also missed a very important game, uh, Iron Man VR. Uh, that one was also Iron Man VR was also delayed. That one's going to be coming out in May now as well. I don't know if it's just because I didn't really I don't keep track of VR stuff unless it's a huge thing like the new Half-Life game that was announced. But mm-hmm. I didn't even know Iron Man VR was a thing until I was looking up game delays for this for this part of the discussion. 
you know? Yeah, no, I, I didn't know about it either. But I mean, I, I don't know anything about the game, but like it would be pretty cool to be Iron Man in VR like that. That would that would be insanely fun to have the power of the Iron Man suit. I agree. At my fingertips. Yeah. If only VR wasn't super expensive. Or... What do you think about? What do I think? What do you about? think about Cyberpunk getting delayed? You know, I think it's three months now. I still haven't played. No, it's more than three months. It's uh, September, so that's five months. Um, I haven't played The Witcher Three. That's something I do want to eventually get to. That goes back to the whole discussion of how much time do we actually have to play video games? Not as much as I want to, and that that's like a potential three hundred hour time sink. It looks good, yeah. but. If it's the same thing with Cyberpunk, I don't know. I, I, in a way, I'm actually, I would probably be more inclined to play this because I do enjoy fantasy for certain games and media, but um, I'm not really grabbed that much by the Witcher, Witcher setting or characters. However, Cyberpunk setting, that's a little bit more interesting to me, and maybe the gameplay would be a bit better. I don't know if it's going to play like Fallout as far as the moment-to-moment gameplay or discussions like if it'll have conversation trees or whatnot or if it's more of a straight first person shooter with rpg aspects but i think i'll probably be more interested in playing cyberpunk 2077 i, I the trailer looks good but until i see some actual gameplay it's just kind of eh. i wasn't that invested in it all that i that's the bottom line yeah I'm i'm in the same boat but you know i am interested uh to see like because it's so big and and granted we haven't i i haven't seen much uh, of it myself but i'm interested in, i love seeing like big uh big sandboxy type of games like this i love seeing them get speed run i love i love seeing speed runs of these just see how people can break the game things mm-hmm. like that I, I i'm excited to see what the the scene for the speed runs for cyberpunk 27 2077 is going to be like shortly after it comes out and just see how it, it evolves yeah so aside from that, we also had a uh, delay for Avengers from Square Enix. Uh, that's, uh, I don't have a date. I just know it was pushed back to September of this year. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that gets another delay after that, given, uh, given Marvel sort of lording over there. They, they want quality stuff. They don't want bad games like they used to have with their, with their stuff yeah you know with all these all these being delayed i honestly don't see it being a problem uh with any of these being delayed honestly because they're delaying them for they're (laughs) sorry they're delaying them for a reason Mm. uh and you know if it makes a better game come out then you know more power to them because like we don't want another tony hawk pro skater 5 where you have a day one 10 gigabyte patch just to be able to play the game properly that's actually the whole game right there i think it was more than 10 gigabytes i think it was like 30 wasn't it i don't remember it was it was around that time you know what games don't make for fun speed runs in my opinion story driven games like long campaigns like uncharted or other stuff like that Mm. speaking of speed runs what else happened this week well not this week but this month we had AGDQ 2020 Awesome Games Done Quick 2020, where they raised $3.13 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's a shit ton of money, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. They, uh, they, they beat SGDQ. SGDQ, I believe, was 3.03, so they got a whole point one more than SGDQ. Only $100,000. That's chump change, right? Just chump change for GDQ at this point. Honestly... Um, kind of chump change because over 10 years they've raised 25 million dollars in total donations that's that's huge it's that's huge ab- absolutely amazing we got to we got to go to sgdq last year and it it's fun to watch it on twitch but it's a whole other experience just being in that stream room on the big games it's they are a ton of fun it is basically like being at a concert too especially when you get a lot of a lot of clapping or you know cheering going on for certain stuff or hype. Yeah, uh, Alex, did you get to watch any of GDQ? This uh, the awesome games done quick. 
the only thing I recall watching live during the event was uh, the tail end of the Super Metroid Impossible run, like from the Ridley fight uh, to the end. I watched all that, and wow, that I need to go back and watch that entire run because it lives up to its name. There's it, it make, takes a game that's already pretty challenging and just cranks up the difficulty to a ridiculous degree. And the dude running it, Oats and Goats, I think was his name, he, he nailed it. Uh, just for for example, the for the difficulty spike, normally at the end of uh, Super Metroid for Escape, you have three minutes after you've killed Mother Brain to escape Zebus. Three minutes is pretty long. Like you, You'll usually get out of there with way more time than you need to, um, to beat the game, to get to your ship. However, for Super Metroid Impossible, you have 90 seconds to get out of Zebus. Not only that, uh, the popular donation, uh, the, the bidding war, I guess you, would, you could call it, for this game is save or kill the animals. And save the animals won. So not only does he have uh, 90 seconds instead of three minutes to get out of, out of the Zebus, he has to save the animals on the way out. And he still nailed it. It was it was kind of close, but it wasn't like, you know, a second or two seconds left. So that, that was fun to watch. After that, the only VOD of note that I've seen was the Terraria run. And I think you saw that live, so you might want to you want to take over on that. And did, did yeah. you see it live? I saw the tail end of it live. I saw the part of the of the run. By the way, the, the runner for for Terraria was Badger and he was absolutely fantastic, but it became a train wreck very quickly. Um, I don't, something was going on with the run where he was running like he had bad RNG. So he was trying to kill all the bosses at once. And I'm not as familiar with Terraria. So forgive me, me if I get, get names wrong. Let me take but over there's, and I can so I, I since I watched the whole thing, I, I, I apologize. I thought you saw the, the entire run. But uh, okay. when, it, when I watched it, uh, I don't know a whole lot about the speedrunning community for Terraria or the run itself. I put, played a shit ton of this game, though. So it was interesting to see it kind of just torn open, as, you know, as it is with most of these games. And um, run seems to go fine at the beginning. The, the amount of inventory management is just ridiculous. Uh, and he's talking. And he has this huge crowd. I, I don't know how these people do it. But the first uh, first really bad point was waiting for the wall of flesh because there's an an item that you need to be able to to spawn him in. It's um, like a voodoo doll you have to drop in the lava, and I think it was like five or six minutes before he got the enemy to spawn. So that's that's a little bit of a wait. The worst part though was the uh, the three mechanical bosses which you have to beat in order to get a different boss to start spawning in. Those can only be fought at nighttime. And when he first summoned them in, it was uh, like right before daytime, so he didn't get a chance to, to finish those fights. Unfortunately, you don't really have a way of changing time in Terraria, at least if you do. He wasn't sure how to do it. And he it boiled down to him just sitting there waiting for nighttime to come so he could summon the bosses. And he was going through all sorts of different commands trying to find out... Um, how to change the time or how to maybe summon the bosses or summon certain NPCs to, or certain enemies to get a different item he would need later on in the run, get that done for them. But uh, in the end, he he had a backup where he just went to a world and got an item to uh, to progress to the next part, which invalidated the run, unfortunately, for like for uploading, like for an official run. Well, it's not just that. There were parts that, like, he got something... Uh, he got he got some item, but then he went somewhere to have like an NPC that he needed mm -hmm. uh, needed to continue progress. But because he didn't get it on his file, the one that he was originally playing on, that NPC wouldn't spawn. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't able to finish the run. They had they mercy killed the run for him. All right. That was the very end of it. Yeah. So basically, but here's the best part, like. Through all this, he was like, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, I mean, we have to wait like 15 minutes to continue for it to become night again. And chat was just donating. There was a $500 donation train. So not just like 
five hundred dollars, not like one or two of them, but it was like five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah. So he raised like thirty thousand dollars on that run over the course of an hour. That, that's yeah, it, pretty insane for one run, like not factoring in any big like bidding wars, ignoring stuff like that. And he was extremely positive throughout the entire thing. A lot of people, a lot of run. Well, I, I, if it were me, I, I know I can be pretty defeatist pretty easily. And to have it just kind of go sideways that much, I, I'm amazed at the positivity that he maintained through this run. It was inspiring, honestly. It w- it was so good. Like uh, people were people were donating because because of him, like mm. because of his personality, because he was he was keeping that positivity up people were people were helping him try to figure like he was in real time getting like donations selling him hey try this hey give this a shot hey here's then, the like, server password that you maybe forgot <laughs> yeah like he he made us he made a separate server so we could get the items that he needed and he forgot the server password for it and then you just hear in chat yell out no it's actually three zeros not four zeros not chat so the crowd was there. actually yeah, yelling what? Yeah, li- the live chat, the live crowd was on there. It was it was so awesome to watch. Um, another run that was pretty good to wa- that was awesome to watch. This one was a donation incentive. It was two runners playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out together, so they're using one controller. Big deal. It can be done. Now they're both blindfolded, Alex. They're both really? blindfolded. Hmm. So the two of them played Mike Tyson's Punch Out blindfolded. Got to Mike Tyson. They weren't knocked down. Well, they were knocked down a couple of times, but those were intentional knockdowns. Mm-hmm. The they like they were not unintentionally knocked down at all during the during the run. It was amazing. It was pretty much a perfect run, minus a few few hiccups. Sounds too good to be true. And one other run that I really enjoyed, and I think it would be fun for the two of us if we could figure out how to do something like this. Oh no! It was uh, Super Mario World. Big deal. We did Super Mario World when you came to visit. Yeah. No, my friend. It is Super Mario World One Mind. So basically, one person's Mario, one person's Lugi. But as you're playing, it just switches to Luigi. That's like every second or two, it'll switch. But they met a crazy donation uh, donation incentive. So it was like every half a second, they were switching between Mario and Luigi. So like... Person one's controlling, but person two is also controlling. It was so fun to watch because uh, this one was done by. Let me see. I actually have the run up. Well, I had the run up, so I, I don't have the names up anymore. But um, this one was it was so good because one of the guys would just troll the other one and like make him get crushed by the giant pillars in the first castle or whatever. It was mm. hilarious. It's not a great speedrun game, but it was great for the entertainment value that it provided. What was the ETA on that run? Uh, well, they used warps, so I think it was like 16, 20 minutes. Mm. But they they got it they got it pretty quickly. So, but Alex, they were Mario, they were Luigi, but you knew who they weren't. They were not Byleth, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Now Thanks. tell me, who is Byleth? What 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 does he mean? What who is that? <sighs> you know, I don't want to start off this segment on a completely negative note, so I'll at least say that the final character for Fighter Pass One in Smash Brothers Ultimate was announced, and it's um, another Fire Emblem character, Byleth, the the self insert for Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now that is a game I have not played at all. I do want to. It's on on the list, but I haven't gotten around to it. But this is. Literally, no hyperbole, not not joking. This is the eighth character from Fire Emblem in the Smash Brothers roster. Well, I think it's I just mean, too much. If you think of how many how many characters from the Mario universe are in the game, Alex? Yeah, but at least those are all unique, different characters, mostly. Excuse me, Luigi is just taller, dumber Mario? He's smarter than Mario, isn't he? <laughs> He's a scaredy cat. Oh, so he's a scaredy cat that makes him an idiot. Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. Yep. You got okay. Him. All cowards are, are dummies. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Myself included. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I still need to go back and watch the direct because it was just a, a direct focus solely on this character and a couple other things uh, with Sakurai detailing the character, why he chose him. 
so I don't know how similar he is to all the other sword fighter boys and girls that are that are in there. I, I'm just I'm, I'm fatigued it, mainly because for the last character in this fighter pass, I kind of was hoping not necessarily for a third party. It didn't have to be a third party uh, character, but just something different, something unexpected to sort of go out with a bang. And it just it kind of felt more like a wet fart at this point. <laughs> So I, 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 we'll have to, I'll have to wait and see. I still haven't bought the fighter pass. I need to do that. Check out these characters. Uh, he might, they, they might be fun to play, but I'm just kind of done with it. Well, okay. So it sounds like you don't like the idea of another Fire Emblem character. Who would you, uh, who would you rather have been put in there, Alex? Doom guy. Doom. Okay. Who realistically, Doom who guy. would you rather? Do you think Doom guy could have actually been? I in think, there? well, he could still be in there. There's a, another fighter pass that was announced. And that one's going to have six characters instead of the five that was on this one. And l- let me let me hit you with some logic here. Okay, go ahead. A lot of the the reasoning behind adding characters into Smash is I don't know if lineage would be the right word, maybe heritage, homage, basically paying tribute to to the classics. So you got Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter, you know, fighting games represented the the classic Street Street Fighting series, uh, series represented. You got Terry from King of Fighters. You got Pac Man. You got Mega Man. So I guess sort of like icons. And you while got Bayonetta. Hey, shut up. Bay- Bayonetta's cool. <laughs> I know that. I know a dig when I hear one. Don't you diss Witch Mommy. Please don't. But uh, yeah, that's what I think with uh, a lot of the inspiration behind choices for characters put in this game. So Doom Guy, a classic character. Doom is a, a super classic game. That is undeniable. Doom is also out on the Switch. So... Therefore, since Doom is available on a Nintendo console, the Doom guy can be in Smash, and he will be in Smash. You can you that... can go back to this podcast and hear Alex the Red say on June nineteenth, twenty twenty, Doom guy will be one of the characters in Fighter Pass Two for Smash Ultimate. Oh, as as violent as Doom is, do you think Nintendo would put Doom guy like not not even a joking question? Do you think Nintendo would be willing to put Doom guy in Smash? Yes, because Joker, a character from Persona 5, a game that is not even on the Switch, was put in Smash, and he has a gun. There, oh. He has a gun in Smash. Okay, he has a gun, but is he, is he blowing people up? I like, mean, I mean, there's a difference between like an RPG. Like in RPGs, you get shot, it's you lose 79 health. Yeah. In Doom, you shoot the zombies or the imps and they leave a bloody corpse on the floor. I mean, you're blowing people out when you play with Joker on Smash, apparently, because he's supposed to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for real, I-, I don't know. I mean, Bayonetta is slicing enemies in half all the time and doing some weird shit. You watch me play Bayonetta 2 and you see some of the finishers on that. She goes half naked almost full naked with her, with her hair going out and summoning this monster from hell who then proceeds to chew up in a very violent manner, whatever boss she's fighting. So I think, I think, I think it would be fine. He, he they'd find a way to make it work. He, they're not going to, you know, shoot BFG yeah. shots and, and wipe out the entire cast in a, a bloody gory mess, but it could work. They, they'd find a way that would be, but honestly, that would be a sick finisher. For a Doom guy, though, what are they called? The Smash Balls? That'd be a, a sick smash attack for him. No, the, the final smash for him would just be a JPEG of uh, the comic where it shows him. I forget what he's saying, but it's the image where he he's just looks like this crazy man and his one of his hands is either burnt or covered in blood. I'll I'll show you the image later, but it, it's just that and everyone dies after that. No, we, we get that. We, we get that. And then all the characters, they, they die. But then you, you get like a little pixelated version of their bodies just on on the ground where they were standing last. With the same that, the camel thing. noise for the imps dying in, mm-hmm. in Doom. Mm-hmm. I can't make the noise. <laughs> it's so wild to think, though, that, that Doom was once like, oh, it's on PC and then it's on Super Nintendo. And now thinking about it now, we've got Doom 2016 on... Well, before, on, you, before you try to have this very, very cleverly done segue... 
There was one other uh, note from the... Uh, yeah, I know, and I was going to console exclusives and how this isn't a console exclusive and how we no, got other no, games... No, 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 no. You, you skipped over the fighter, the uh, Mii Fighters. Not only did Byleth get announced... I care! Because you get... Not only do you get Rabbids from the Raving Rabbids series, classic character. You get Mega Man X, actually classic character. Mega Man EXE from the Battle Network series. And sure, you get Altair of Assassin's Creed, but Cuphead has a costume! Cuphead has a costume in this game. Sure, it's just a costume. I'm not quite as excited as Sans getting the costume and the track in there, but that I, I was really cool to see. Like, that game came out, what, in 2017, I think it was? And it was just recently released on the Switch, but that kind of a turnaround. I, I, it warms my heart to see Nintendo working with devs to this extent to have stuff like that put into their game. Stuff like that, or having Shovel Knight as an assist trophy really cool to see i really you know, like it, that it is really cool that they add in these these costumes for the me fighters mm. but at the same time realistically how often do you think people play as the me fighters like oh. it's cool that you could be sans it's cool that you could be mega man or you could be uh could be cuphead but i mean you'd play would would someone playing as them play maybe like once or twice and be like no oh, it's Pretty much the same thing as the other gun me fighter I have, Probably. just with a different costume. Pretty much, that's what I would do. No lie, but like I, I really, I like I think it is cool that these these costumes have been added into the game. But and, and I I appreciate it. I just wish there was a way to get some of these. And, and I know it's not easy to get like new characters into the game, so it's uh, nice yeah. to have it in there. Um, but. It'd be nice to see like Cuphead as a character or to see Sans Undertale as a character instead of just the costume that you'll get used maybe once or twice. Yeah. I mean, those guys definitely will not be characters now. You know who is a oh. character, though? Who? People complaining about console exclusivity being a requirement. I mentioned mm -hmm. that because there are some heavy rumors floating around. Well, one heavy one, just like one tweet. Their uh, sources are saying that Horizon Zero Dawn may be coming to PC, which I think is is great because I like my consoles. Some of them I like more, hint, hint, Nintendo stuff. But I'm all for more people being able to have access to these games because the more people that have access to them, if more people are buying them, we get more sequels to games that maybe otherwise would not have gotten some. Or, just, you know, just more... More hands on good stuff is is good, I'd say. Yeah. Um. So, Alex, you're referring to Horizon Zero Dawn and Dreams being rumored to come to the PC. Yes, it hasn't yes. been officially announced. Yes. It was spoken to by someone close, who's not named, but close to Sony, who has mentioned that this is in the works. Did I say um, it is coming to PC? I th I thought I said rumored. You, you may have said rumored. I just okay. want to just clarify that it just rumored. make sure that we've got rumored out there. Um. But I, I know I saw you post in your Discord about someone complaining about <laughs> about the PlayStation <laughs> losing their exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn. And you know what? Big whoop, dude. Th that means more people get to play the game. More people get to enjoy themselves playing this game that you got to play first. And that's OK. Um, like the more the more that people get to play, play, play these games the more the more joy in the world is happening right so w like i understand console exclusives but i don't understand why anyone would be upset about a console exclusive no longer being being exclusive to that console and i i, I feel like we're starting to see more and more of this kind of thing like i read that detroit become human is moved moved away from just the the yeah, the PlayStation. You can buy it on the Epic Game Store. Mm hmm. Um, we're seeing more cross platform support. Did did Sony ever go into that cross platform support with Call of Duty? Do you remember? I'm I pretty know... sure that for Black Ops Four, you can play any play with anyone on any platform. Excuse me, not Black Ops Four. Modern Warfare, the most the new Modern War Modern Warfare 2019. God, these fucking naming conventions, dude. I hate it. It's Modern so Warfare bad. released in the year of our Lord. 2019. You can play that one with anyone on any platform. I'm pretty sure. You don't don't quote me on that, but I might be wrong. But like it, it just it it 
feels so much nicer to like, hey, I've got a friend with an Xbox, but I've got a PlayStation. I don't want to buy an Xbox so I can yeah. play video games with them. I want to play video games with them, but I don't want to be locked into like we have to I have to buy a three hundred dollar console or he's got to buy a three hundred dollar console to play with me. And then now, the online service with said console. Mm hmm. So now I can play Call of Duty. I At least I know I, it's with. Xbox. Uh, Xbox and PC yeah. so I could buy it on my PC and play play with him on his Xbox. Mm. Hopefully Sony gets around doing that more often. I, I do think that it was that way with PlayStation, but I don't know, know for sure. But hopefully like Sony will get into that, too. So like it's just it's breaking down the barriers and we can play play together without having to spend an additional four hundred dollars yeah. to get the, to buy the game. Buy the console, buy PlayStation Network or Xbox Live. Buy the headset buy the... so you don't sound like shit when you're talking to your friend. Mm hmm. I so know Fortnite all... did it. Fortnite's like full cross play. I, well, I think. I think. See, I, I really feel like that's going to be the future, future of gaming. And I, I hope that's the case too. Just so it's a lot like, I mean, I've, I have nothing against the Xbox, but I've always had a PlayStation. So I'm probably going to buy the PlayStation 5 instead of the Xbox Series 1 X Series 360 720. So um, yeah, let's not talk about that cuz I can already feel my blood boiling <laughs> with an, with more naming conventions. Yeah. They're taking tips from Nintendo, that's what's happening. What, I wonder what the new Switch is going to be called. Switch switch it up. Yeah, the, <laughs> Switch L. Just throw a random letter in there and then people will won't be sure if it's a new console or if it's just like an addition to it. Just put a big L on there. They're definitely uh, not you, taking an L. You know what would be cool with that Switch L though? What would be probably cool? probably something like Doom Eternal. Is Doom Eternal coming out on the Nintendo Switch? I actually I actually don't know. I, I want to find this out. Who but... knows? I was thinking like maybe like um the future generation console generation but i don't think we're there yet for doom eternal but doom eternal is coming out and they've come out with a new trailer isn't that right alex yes and not really much to touch on here besides i, I cannot wait to rip and tear until it is done on march 20th yeah it's, it's coming to switch it's coming out on i don't know if it's the same hell yeah like year and date but uh it's coming out on the console I'm just going to get rid of the, the topic here because I don't want to have to keep updating it. Yeah, That's more, fair. More, more kimono stuff. Sorry, guys. Rip and tear it, Alex. Rip and tear it. But yeah. Uh, the trailer doesn't show a ton. There are a couple of interesting things, and one of them is something that's already been touched on before, basically. Not only are you fighting hell, but it's being very, very heavily hinted that you're fighting heaven. So not only are demons bad, but also angels bad. You're basically Bayonetta, but with guns and ar actual armor, I guess. Um, and you're a dude. I think. I'm assuming. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, sure. it looks really good. I'm excited to play it. Uh, oh, not only are you fighting heaven, but you're also... There's one enemy that's teased in here, and what he's wearing, I don't know for sure, but it looks really close to the armor for uh for what doom guy is wearing i'm just gonna pop an image up here i'll pop it in the, into the chat I guess for I me yeah for or you. for or for actual chat i don't know how to how do uh, I, yeah I'll, I'll show you just so you, you can follow what i'm saying but if you look at his armor there and then look at doom guy's armor it looks pretty similar like the same sort of like technology so i don't know if he's Maybe like a previous Doom Slayer, like if there's some lore going on that uh, that can be expanded upon, or if it's just the main bad guy that happens to look kind of like he has the same kind of stuff. I don't know. I thought that was pretty interesting. And, and to describe the armor for our audio listeners, uh, he's wearing the same kind of green armor that Doom Guy is. It's like it's green pants, and he's got like a green jacket, and he's wielding a uh, looks like looks to be a lightsaber axe it looks pretty dope <laughs> lightsaber axe yeah it does look pretty pretty dope you, you get a sword like that too it was also also shown on the trailer 
So yeah. it's Star Wars. Don't slander slander <laughs> Doom in this way, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I am gonna actually I don't want to say I'll have a hard time deciding between this and Animal Crossing. But uh I, I wanna play both. Yeah, this, this is gonna be a very good game. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed again. Because this is this is its first delayed release date. It was supposed to come out back in like November of last year. So this is the second new Doom game, right? So Doom 2016, this is the second Doom? Yeah. I wonder if there's going to be a third Doom. Uh, I, I wonder, you know what I also wonder? I wonder if there's going to be, I don't know, maybe a third Left for Dead. Do you know anything about that, Alex? Nope, because Valve super duper totally not so seriously. We promise we're not okay. We are definitely actually not working on Left 4 Dead 3. I don't remember where the where it started. There was some some uh you know how the uh these these uh that is data mining? Not data mining. Yeah. When they're when they're going down into like the nitty gritty of like press releases for VR shit or, or updates for for software or for database shit. I don't know. I don't know what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Uh, they found something about L4D3. Obviously, if it's dealing with Valve, people are going to think, hey, it's Left 4 Dead 3. And Valve swears up and down that they are not working on it. And honestly, given how Blizzard was saying for a few months, hey, we're definitely not working on Diablo 4. Nope, that's not a thing that exists. We're definitely not working on this game. We know there is no such thing. And then they announce it. I don't really trust when a company says, we're not working on this. We're absolutely not working on it. Wink. I feel like there's a big, big old wink there. Wait a minute. Alex, are you telling me that companies, they would do that? They would go online on the <laughs> internet and just lie to us? Yeah. Apparently, Makes sense. Apparently, these rumors have been going on for a couple months. I'm actually looking at the article. So I have information to about. Is this one? Were were people thinking that this was going to be a VR title, uh, like the new Half Life? I don't even know if the new Half Life is supposed to be Half Life Three, but were people thinking that this was going to be a VR title, like that one's going to be? Uh, let's see. Talking about. Reports from YouTube channels like Valve News Network claiming to have leaked Left 4 Dead 3 screenshots. And an HTC representative from China published a recent talk on VR. Oh, apparently that talk included a mention of Left 4 Dead. Okay. I mean, I can see like... I I can see it being like, if it does come out, because it's not coming out, but if it does come out, I can see it working as a VR title. Looks like they're going that way with their main titles. The so the only bad. problem that I have with that is VR is cool. I don't want to say don't make VR stuff because obviously VR needs some some sort of like a system seller. It's not a system, but you know, same idea. It needs a system seller to get people to to buy in. I don't feel like there there's a game for that yet. But for something like this, especially with the Half Life game that's been clamored for for years, literally years and years, I. Uh, I want there to be an option. Put it on VR, fine, but let me play it without the headset. Let me play it on my regular computer. I don't care if it looks worse or whatever. I want the option. Uh, that's my concern. But at the same time, we're not getting that system seller for for our VR headsets. Well, I mean, though. it's... What's the... Uh, plays better on whatever. I think it was plays better on Xbox or plays better on Xbox One X. There was some sort of tagline for a console recently. Mm-hmm. Plays better on VR. Best experience VR. Optimal with VR. Whatever you want to slap on there to make it obvious you should buy this, fine. But I just don't want to have to buy VR. I, I want it, but I don't want to have to do it for these games. Same. Absolutely. And you know, this actually leads me to down the line of thinking, if they do release this as a VR title, and if they do release, well, they are releasing Half-Life 3 as a VR title, that makes me wonder if there are going to be any other Valve properties that would be released in the future as possibly a third title uh, coming coming as a VR title. Something like maybe Portal 3 or a Team Fortress 3. That one would be a little bit a, li- a little harder since it's, you know, 
a first person shooter, but it'd be, it'd be, it'd be cool just to like speculate and think about this stuff. We don't, I don't think there's anything coming out like that. I don't know of anything coming out like that, but it'd be, it's, it's fun to like speculate and think about how games like that would work. In fact, I'm even thinking about how, like if left for dead three came out as a VR title, how that would work. Honestly, I doubt that team fortress three will ever happen. I'm pretty sure team fortress two will continue until the heat death of the universe (laughs) because of that. There's just something about that game that, that just will not let it stop existing. The, the hat economy, all the weird gun shit and attachments and the weird game modes they have every year. I don't know. I don't think that'll that'll stop for a while yet. And you know what? That's, that's A-OK. I mean, it still has, like you said, the hat economy making it go. It's still, a, a, I mean, it's still a fun game. There are people playing it, so, like, don't don't take the horse out when the horse is doing good. That's yeah. that's the turn of phrase I'm looking for. Yeah. So that's all for that last notable notable event. Sony's skipping out on E3. Yep. I don't that's... really know what to think of this. I I mean have. I forget last year. Did Sony do a Nintendo Direct style online presentation? I feel like I remember seeing something with Last of Us Two in it, but I don't remember if that was E3 or if that was a Sony exclusive. Yeah, I forgot they skipped last year, so that's why I was saying I don't know what to think. So, actually, no. Let me let me retract that statement. I do know what to think. If it worked for them last year, which it seemed to mostly work, maybe just because they kind of have Last of Us 2 carrying them at the moment. But uh, honestly, I think E3 is just kind of losing its uh, validity, its its purpose in a way. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I wonder what the point of E3 is at this point. We don't have Nintendo going. I mean, we still have Microsoft over there. So it's yeah. kind of the Microsoft show along with other games coming out. But we don't have like the big consoles, the Sony's. We don't have Nintendo over there anymore. So, I mean, what's what's really the the drive for going to E3? The Ubisoft conferences, obviously the best. The best ones. No, no, no. Who, who's is the who's that conference? The, the They're really weird. Devolver Digital. Yeah, those ones are I mean, they're not even like live, are they? No, they're not. They have a live thing that's somehow even weirder than that stuff. But uh, the Devolver conferences are actually pretty entertaining. For the first couple, they were kind of I don't want to say cringe, cringy, but they were definitely trying to find their footing, but this last one from from 2019 was very entertaining. Like they still find a way to somehow sprinkle out game announcements through them, but still feel like something that's not a presentation like not trying to sell you stuff that makes sense yeah i i really enjoyed those and you know part of me really does enjoy the ubisoft the ubisoft uh conferences because you love watching train wrecks who doesn't yeah absolutely but i mean at the same time like i just i can't i remember being younger and getting so excited for e3 i i remember on the this isn't even like younger younger hippo this is like hippo in his like i don't know 18 19 maybe 20 Hmm. uh i would download the e3 sony conferences when they were hosted by kevin butler was that his it was his name kevin butler the ceo or whatever oh yeah yeah that's right i would download them on my playstation i would watch them on my playstation i'd get home from work i used to work at gamestop i'd sit down and I'd download the conference and I'd watch them and it'd be a fun time to watch. It was, it was funny. Uh, there were games that were being announced that were really cool. Now when E3 comes around, I'm just like, I mean, sure. I'll, I'll check out Reddit afterwards and see if there was anything cool announced. That's basically how I feel. I'll still watch the conferences, but there's, there's some fatigue going on here. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's me or us getting older or if that's, E3 just not really mattering as much anymore. Well, I think Nintendo sort of started the whole thing when they... I forget what year they stopped going. It wasn't too long before Sony. But when they have their directs, I, th- I think it's having the option of having more 
events throughout the year because they have a bunch of directs throughout the year now. It's not just having to save it all for E3 and jam it all in there and trying to like worry about the logistics of that. You can have one game has its own or one series has its own event or direct. One literally one game has its own direct like with uh Smash Brothers just a couple days ago. And uh I think for overall it's it's for the better because it doesn't feel as stuffed. It um as stuffy I should, I mean um uh, they can kind of go into more detail on each game. They don't they don't feel as rushed. It, it's a better experience overall, I would say. As much of an experience as, you know, getting excited to buy product. I agree with you. So if Sony looks at them and says, hey, why, why don't we do the same thing? I, I don't blame them. And Sony definitely seems to like they want to bring a lot more production value to it. Yeah, the, you. I think you were walking through parts of the Last of Us set, if for lack of a better term, because it's you know a digital set, but they re- recreated it. And you were walking through parts of the. They were walking through parts of the set when they were going through their thing last year, maybe two years ago. Yeah, it's it's some some online thing that I remember watching for Sony. That was a Nintendo Direct style event. Yeah, but I think it's going to be good in the long run. I. Uh... I don't know. It just for a while E3 was mainly just a an event for press to go to and it would just be marketing presentations like we sold x number of units of blah 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 and here's what we expect for blah 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 and blah blah blah. And then eventually it started to go more towards announcements, getting hype built up for games, still mostly press and then they opened up um attendance for just regular people and I think that's where it started to lose its not not its luster, but I don't even want to say lose its purpose, but to sort of pivot to something else, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm tired, and I can't I can't form the sentences. It's kind of well, Alex. With you being tired, I think that that makes this the uh, perfect time to uh, to say our goodbyes. What do you think? I'm not in a hurry to go. We, is there anything else that we wanted to briefly touch on, or? Talk about or we want to do a well no it's not invent segments on the fly <laughs> i was gonna say let's take a question from chat but yeah uh mister i'm going to ignore your segues three times well we don't have to have a segue every <laughs> time we can have jump cuts to segments oh we absolutely can Mr. I'm going to ignore your segues every single time. I'm going to get it after we're done, guys. I, I can't wait to. No, not those segues. Yeah. Wrong, set, wrong segue, chat. Pardon me, Alex, while I ride my segue out of this podcast, because I do believe it is time for us to uh, say our goodbyes. Yeah, I am actually very starving. I just had this sudden realization that I need food in my stomach. So let's go ahead and end it. That, that's That's a good segue right there. Red Alex needs food badly. I do need food badly. That was almost <laughs> the name of the podcast. Uh, what? Wall kick? No. Red Alex. You know what? <laughs> Hippo, uh, why don't you tell me where we can find you? Absolutely. You can find me over on twitter.com slash hippo underscore pat underscore amiss hippopatamus. And also on Twitch at hippopatamus hippo underscore pat underscore amiss. And you can also find me on this lovely podcast called Console Command. Why do you like underscores so much? Because hippopotamus without them was taken. Oh, it's <laughs> weird how how much stuff is taken. Like I still can't get rid of the the second D. I don't want two Ds. I want one D. One D is. I believe one. someday, someday you will you will have the D. I will have the the big D. <laughs> uh, well, Alex, how about how about you tell us you tell us where we can find you. I mean, you can find me right here on twitch.tv slash alextheRed. This is where we will continue to stream episodes of Console Command. I know I said previously that uh, we do it elsewhere, but we're going to keep it here for now. You can also find me on twitter.com slash alextheRed. Red there, like I said, has two Ds. I only want one big D, but unfortunately, Twitter won't let me have it. And uh, trying to think of a more natural way to end this. And you can also find Alex the Red on Console Command, the podcast Console Command, which can also be found on Spotify and we got on iTunes yet or we got on the iTunes I'm still yet? waiting on approval for that. 
You can find us on Spotify. And if you check our uh, our Twitter, you can also find the RSS feed so you can get us into your podcast app of choice. Should probably get a link for that, huh? We'll get it. We'll get it after the show. We got it. We got no, it. I want to drop it in the chat. Can I drop it in the chat? I mean, it's your chat. I'm not going to stop you. Good, because I am dropping it in there right now. And anyway, uh, guys. VODs will be saved, so you can view those. Oh, youtube.com slash Alex the Red. Red has two Ds there, too. I don't have the link for that, unfortunately. So I'm going to let uh, the music carry you away to the uh, soft, sleepy, quiet town of uh of console commandia that just after i prolong this segment for long enough to get the right thing that i want into the media player because alex in his everlasting wisdom does not know how to uh end things properly so i now have the thing here so thank you guys uh the way uh very much i was trying to say wait but my brain isn't working. I'm very tired. We'll see you maybe next week. Yeah, probably. We'll see you next week. All right. We'll see you next week, Maybe guys. with something a little different, perhaps. A different, slightly different format. Smidge different. Smidge different. But thank you for joining right. me, Hippo. I will see you Absolutely. all uh, for the next episode uh, sometime next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a beautiful night. They can't see you, Hippo. Can they hear me? Maybe. Alex!